Hello, and today you find me in the rain outside St Gorland Station. The old station now has a new adjunct which appears to be perpetually playing noughts and crosses. And inside the grand old entrance is access to the ticket offices and also some beautiful old features. It's actually time I went over to my platform as I don't have too long until the train is due on its incoming working from Luzerne. And it's a nice touch that there's a great big chocolate advert here. Right, we need to go down the modern underpass which also doubles as a retail space too. And our train is the Interregio due out from Platform 4 at 10.05. And before the train comes in, let's have a look at the route for today. So today the plan is to follow the entire route of the Sudostbahn Interregio Foralpen Express. So from St Golan we will leave the main line to Zurich and head up to Herisau. After a wiggle through the Prealps, we'll pop out at Vatviel and then we'll dive into the 8.6 km long Ricken Tunnel to Utsnack. Then we'll skirt the oversea to Rappersville before crossing the lake to Fafikon on the southern shore. Then there's a big climb to Bieberbrug and then on to Rottenturm and shortly after that we'll come down the other side to the major junction station of Art Goldau. After a short run up the side of the Zugersee we'll switch southwest to Kuznacht and Lake Luzerne itself. There's a couple more stops at Megan and Furkus House, which is where the National Transport Museum is situated, and then finally we'll swing around and pull into Luzerne from the south. Now the distance is just 125 kilometres, or 78 miles, but the challenge in geography means it will still take 2 hours and 16 minutes. And today's train will be an RABE 526 Stadler Flirt Traverso. In May, I say, a stunning copper, red and black livery. The Sudostbahn has been using these trains on the route since 2019. Anyway, it's three minutes to ten, so our train has just eight minutes to complete the turnaround, so I can't stand out here just admiring the paintwork. However, although I've got a first-class pass, let's get on here for a walk through second class. Oh, level boarding. That's a great start. Well, these second-class seats look excellent and pretty classy with their wood effect seat backs. And remember, people have just left the train, but it still looks pristine. As we pass through the corridor between some of the Flirt's equipment bays, the overall view of the cabin is bright, comfortable and spacious. There's some flip-up seats here, which I'm guessing will be handy for bikes, buggies and people needing an accessible space. And then here is what I think they call the Bistro, which is in reality just two vending machines, one for snacks and one for drinks. And beyond the accessible toilet is the true accessible area. And then we can pass on into first class. And wow, this is without doubt the nicest first class I've ever seen on a regional EMU service. What luxury! So it's mostly 2 plus 1 configuration, but there's even some 1 plus 1 seating. Let's have a closer look at this 1 plus 1 seating. This really does feel luxurious. That little side table makes it all the more special and not only is there coat hooks, but there's also an actual row of coat hangers. And the seats up front, well, they're tempting, but they have already been taken. And of course we depart spot on time and we're out into the rainy day. And can you hear that weird hiss sound? And there it goes again. Anyway, let's enjoy the view from the top of the Sitter Viaduct. I'm sat near where the two coaches join, so I think the odd noise is the dampeners on the couplings. I think I'd better move. Sudosbahn has these boards which change as you go past. Very neat. Oh, and Herisau is gateway to the mostly meter gauge Appenzellerbahn. It's on the Interrail network too, so maybe I should come back. Do let me know in the comments if you think I should. 
and up we go on the first of many climbs on this route. The name for Alpen translates to pre-alpine, and so it is these slopes just below the Alps that the train will be traversing. And even in the rain it is really beautiful, I can imagine hearing cowbells clanking in the distance. Whilst the hills are gentler than the High Alps, the view from the Waldbach viaduct is no less impressive. And it's shortly followed by the Spitzmull and a little collection of viaducts, all with great views. To get between the valleys of the Nectar and the Tour, we have to pass through the 3.5 km Wasserflu tunnel. Popping out at the junction station at Lichtensteig. And Wattwil is where we pause before entering the northern portal of the 8.6 km long Ricken tunnel. So impressive and important to feature that the train display boards show information about it. Whilst we're in the tunnel, let's have a close look at the seats. There's a tiny amount of recline and power sockets are under the armrests with more power at the side of the table too. The small table has a mini bin and a very alarming button marked stop. What on earth will happen if you press it? These side tables make everything feel very posh and Mark demonstrates it's a great place to stick your carry-on bag and I demonstrate that it could also be a great place to stick your feet up without damaging the upholstery. And we finally pop out at Coltbrun and sadly the weather on this side of the mountain is just as bad. Utsnak is the gateway to more lakeside running and as we leave the station we're soon following the north shore of the Obersee. The lake is known as the Obersee up to Rapperswil, beyond that it becomes the Zurich Sea. Well there's certainly not much jolly boating going on on this wet and cold March morning. Beyond Rappersville, the line and the road crosses the lake on a causeway, with a short bridging section in the centre. Hmm, that elevated walkway looks a great route on a nice day. On the south side we arrive at Fafikon just in time to see a push-pull intercity service rumble through. But we don't faff about and the train soon leaves with a lovely view of a stately old RE620. And soon we leave the lake behind and start the relentless steep climb up the Sudosbahn line to Bieberbrook. You can see how steep the line is as the buildings fall away really quickly. And of course, the higher we go, the more likely we are to enter the low clouds that are dominating today's weather. The line swings fully 180 degrees around a tight curve, joining another line from the lakeside before coming into Samstagen. Samstagen is home of a major SOB facility, and there looks to be quite a bit of old stock in this siding as we climb away. These flirts really do make light work of these climbs. What excellent EMUs they are.
Bieberbrug, I guess is named due to there being a bridge here over the River Bieber. And we too will be crossing the river in a little while as we continue our climb. The road and the railway now both traverse the Rothenthurm Hockmoor. And finally the climb is over. Just beyond Rothentherm at Biebereg we reach the summit of the line and start the descent down the valley of the river Steiner R to Art Galdau. The Steiner R drains into the Lauer Sea, but we'll stay high and cut across to Art Galdau. And now far below us is the line coming up from the south that Mark and I will be riding tomorrow through the Gotthard Pass to Lugano. Now, we'll both have videos of that ride coming out soon. Art Galdau is where the lines join, and there's also a wonderful old turntable and locomotive shed here too. The blue rail cars we see here are for the narrow gauge Rigibarn that leaves Art Galdau to climb the mountain of the same name. Now that's another ride that you could possibly tell me about in the comments. Should I be doing that one? And from up here there is a lovely view of the town of Art which is on the shore of the Zuga Sea. It is another beautiful lake but our flirt is now sniffing the finish line at Luzerne so we will soon turn away southwest in search of Lake Luzerne itself. And at Kusanakt we get our first view of the lake and we are now definitely on the last leg of this lovely journey across the Swiss pre-Alps. But there's still time for a quick look at the Transport Museum and, as we roll past, let's talk ticket prices. Well, as ever, they vary a lot, but booking not too far in advance on train line, I was offered second class tickets for around £30 and first class for around £54. Once again, I would definitely advise using Interrail if you intend to travel extensively within Switzerland. And with that we roll into Luzerne where Mark and I will be staying for a couple of nights. So do watch out for trip reports from Switzerland on Mark's Let's Make a Trip channel too. We're going to be taking another journey in the afternoon and so Mark has promised to get his camera out for that one. But that's it for this rainy ride on the Feralpen Express. The lovely countryside and the quality of the SOB train means that I would highly recommend it. And if you want to catch up with more of my Swiss adventures, there's a playlist here. But in the meantime, from Luzerne, it's goodbye. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon.